Hey, it's Matt, your average gamer, and guess what? We're on day two of a build a day until DLC is announced. I know it's inevitably coming soon, so I decided to do a build every single day until they announce DLC. It's got to be on the way soon. We know it is. The anniversary of the game's coming up, and I can't wait for it. So let's get to this. This is obviously the Rivers of Blood. Now, the Rivers of Blood took a significant hit in recent patches. It is down from what it used to be. It used to proc bleed on the weapon art fairly consistently, but it was overpowered because it procced it two, three times per weapon art usage, where now it may proc once, which is along the lines of being fair. However, is it still good? Well, you're going to see in this video, it can still be a very good weapon. This is on New Game Plus 7, Journey 14 at this point, and we're going to do a lot with the Rivers of Blood here to try to make it as good as possible and to turn it into a fantastic build that still utilizes a very fun weapon art that's really been a blast since launch. It was just a little bit too overpowered for a long time. So we're building up the usage here by doing consecutive and successive attack stuff. We're basically going to get the bonuses from the weapon art. It still stacks as far as the weapon art goes there with the consecutive attack bonuses and whatnot. And it does both fire damage while also proccing a little bit of bleed compared to what it used to do, which was a lot of bleed. I know you can use Hal or Blood Boil as an option for this, but being that it does both fire and physical damage, Flame Grant Me Strength is probably your best bet, along with Golden Vow, and then we're going to be using the Consecutive Attack tier as well. The Fire tier can help in some instances. I think I'd rather use the Defense or Faith tier for boosts and buffs and whatnot, because the Fire tier, while it does help, it's only going to add a little bit. It's not a ton of fire damage, but it is there along with the Fire Scorpion Charm, which I also chose not to use because simply stacking the consecutive attack bonuses for the Rivers of Blood has pretty much been the way to go since launch, since the weapon art does benefit from it and you can consistently get high damage numbers even in between procs. So shredding enemies is definitely the best part of the Rivers of Blood's weapon art because it can still do it, especially enemies that are neutral or weak to fire. It actually does fairly decent with the tree avatars in the game as well because of a little bit of fire damage. At the end of this video or towards the end, you're going to see a fight with Morgoth and you're going to be surprised. On New Game Plus 7, the max scaling, what it can do to Morgoth, it absolutely shreds. It's definitely something you're going to want to see. By the way, if you're not subbed, Definitely sub to this channel if you want to check out all the builds I'll be doing up until the DLC gets announced, which I can't wait for. It's going to be an absolute blast. This channel continues to grow, and it's been a ton of fun. So if you're worried about mobs, don't worry about them too much because the Rivers of Blood's weapon art absolutely shreds mobs. It really is fantastic against them. As you can tell as I go through the capital here, the weapon art really works well to clear out mobs while doing a lot of damage. And between the damage and usually getting one proc on the bigger enemies, it makes it very easy to use, stuns them a lot, does a lot of damage. It really is a fantastic weapon for mob control. So be prepared to go through with ease and we're going to show build, setup, everything you'll need to know in a little bit here. Because with that consecutive attack stuff built up with the Lord of Blood's Exaltation, you're able to absolutely destroy mobs and... A lot of the bosses in the game too, this is really a fantastic weapon still, it's quite, it still is very good, it's just not overpowered anymore, it's not the ridiculousness that it used to be, but the weapon art is still fun, it's always been a fun, kind of interesting weapon art, even though obviously at launch it was very much overused, it still is pretty cool to use it, especially since now it's a much more fair weapon in the game. Just going to show a little bit of golden shade here. It doesn't go nearly as well against bosses that are immune to bleed because it's a katana. It's not going to do a ridiculous amount of pure damage. And bosses like this one, which probably has at least 20% fire resistant or so, it makes it a little bit more difficult between that and not getting bleed procs since we're on max scaling. Golden shade doesn't have a ridiculous amount of HP. Not going to be incredibly difficult, but at the same time, it's certainly not the easiest thing in the world to use the Rivers of Blood against him. And I know a lot of people do it for Radagon and Elden Beast. Not fantastic for them either, since they're both immune to bleed. Although, Radagon will take the full complement of fire damage. But that was just in there to show its effectiveness on enemies that are immune to bleed. However, tree avatars are immune to bleed, but because of their additional fire damage that they take, the Rivers of Blood is actually quite good against them. 
Now on to Morgoth. After using Flame Grant Me Strength and Golden Vow and drinking the consecutive attack tier, we're going to go in here and we're going to try to fight Morgoth on New Game Plus 7 using the Rivers of Blood. So, we're going to use the Shackle, of course, to get the drop on him because why not? We have it. And at this point, we're able to phase him very quickly and do a lot of damage. I believe Bleed procced on him at least once there. And then we're going to go in and we're going to attack Morgoth again because he's neutral to fire. He takes the full complement of fire damage. And guess what? He gets absolutely shredded by the Rivers of Blood on patch 1.08.1. So is the Rivers of Blood still good? Yeah, it's decent. Let's check out the equipment. For this setup, we have the Rivers of Blood plus 10. We have the Dragon Communion Seal, because why not? Scales with Arcane, the White Mask, Shard of Alexander, Melissa's Prosthesis, Lord of Blood's Exaltation, Rotten Wing Sword Insignia, and we have the Consecutive Attack tier and the Faith tier for buffs as well. For stats at 150, I was able to shred on the max scaling of the game with these stats, so I think they're fine. They could obviously be better. I'm not perfect with the stats all the time, but I went for, I think, 50 dexterity in total and 45 arcane. Arcane tends to soft cap for bleed around 40. Dex will soft cap around 60. Even so, though, I think we got enough damage out of the katana and the rivers of blood weapon art with these stats. It really ended up working out. Not a lot of issues there. So now for buffs to jump down here, it's really not too complicated as far as what I'm using. I mentioned it before, but we're mainly going to drink our tier, which is obviously the consecutive attack bonus, and then use Golden Vow, Flame Grant Me Strength because we're doing fire and physical damage, and then use the Rivers of Blood awesome weapon art to take advantage of the Shard of Alexander too, and also use a weapon art that can absolutely destroy in terms of damage, even if it procs bleed significantly less than it used to. So I wanted to test this at gate front too and then take on another field boss or so just to kind of show it off. But overall, I think we came up with a decent Rivers of Blood build to take advantage of the damage, even if the bleed procs, which used to proc two or three times per weapon art, which was insane, are much more on a level with fair now. The entire weapon art may proc once. It's certainly, I don't think, gonna proc twice. So it's nowhere near where it was at launch, but even so, it still does bleed, it still does good fire damage, still builds up consecutive attack bonuses, and it's still a very good weapon art to use for the majority of Elden Ring. If I can use it on the max scaling, you can definitely use it on the earlier new game cycles without much of an issue. It really is still something that's definitely usable. If you like the Rivers of Blood, yes, it's not going to be as powerful as it was at launch, it's not going to be as dominant in PvP and whatnot, however, it was brought down to a more reasonable level. The weapon was pretty broken at launch. The procking was ridiculous. Obviously, in PvP, you could instantly get shredded by it. The range, I think, was even further than it is now, and it still has decent range. Even so, though, we're talking about PvE here, and does it still have a place in PvE? Yeah, it does. As I mentioned before, I think to finalize the Rivers of Blood and to put together the best build that I could to build up on the consecutive attack stuff... It's good now. It's good. I don't even know if it's great, but it's certainly not overpowered, but it's definitely not bad either, and it's still a fun weapon with a really cool weapon art from a katana that does both fire and bleed. And Agil went down pretty quickly. Even dragons who are decently resistant to bleed, it works well against. You saw two fights with dragons in this, and I think a couple of main bosses and whatnot too. As far as NPC invader go, invaders go, this is not very difficult. You can pretty much instantly shred them with the damage. You don't even necessarily need to proc bleed, but generally speaking, most NPC invaders, you're probably going to proc at least once on them and do a lot of fire and bleed damage in general because between the proc and the fire damage, it's just going to take down their HP very quickly. Granted, probably still useful in PvP, but thankfully, I don't think it has the range it once did, and I don't think it can proc like three times on the weapon art, which was absolutely crazy. And that is day two of our build a day until DLC is announced. That's right, we're doing a build a day until DLC is announced, and I'm one of the hopefuls that truly believes it is coming soon. We need a DLC for this game because this game is fantastic. It's one of the best games I've ever played, and I cannot wait for it. In the meantime, check out all the awesome builds on my channel. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll catch you guys there.